The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Okay, I'm just going to get started. Uh, first, a uh, little administrative stuff. Um, I Definitely fewer people signed in on Monday than actually showed up in class. So uh, there were a bunch of people who just forgot to sign in. Uh, I tried to check off people that I remembered being in class, but if you were in class and you think that you may not have signed in, I have Monday's, uh, Monday's sign up sheet here. So um, this is up front. I'm not going to pass it around. You can just come up here and sign in if you need to. The actual attendance sheet is, I believe, on the table right there now. Yeah. So make sure that um, that gets handed off to anybody who comes in later. And uh, I'm going to start off with talking about the reading. We're going to play some games that are related to that reading, and then we're going to take a break, do your uh, uh, setup, and then you'll be playtesting with each other. All right. Who is on a team who doesn't have a game yet? Like, you're waiting for team members to bring it in. You don't think you're going to have a game ready today? We don't have a so we, don't, we don't have our board, but we can do it on tiles again. You, you can do it on tiles? So, so far, we've only play tested in the hallway. Okay. We actually bought a board, which is on its way. Okay. Oh, on its way is fine, because, because we're going to do play testing in the second half of class. But by oh, no, what do you mean on its way? You mean like US postal? Like on a truck. Oh. <laughs> But so I mean, we've only played this on tiles so far. It's worked, so we can just do it on tiles. On yeah. tiles, you mean? Yeah, in the hallway. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, because of the live action game. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. Absolutely, that that will work fine. All right. So today's reading was part learned, and some of you may be surprised that we jumped all the way back to chapter one. But uh, it's kind of revisiting an old topic, right? First of all, uh, he talks about the basic concepts of games and play um, and sports. And I kind of want to go back to that, but as I, I've, I've already voiced my own opinion on um, on the what is game question, uh, as in I think it's not very productive to, to talk about what is a game because then you now have to decide what isn't a game. But what I do like to talk about are all the different things that play and game can mean. You know, it's just like, especially in the English language, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's it, he, um, even in Partlet, he already talks about how it's a little bit weird that we have two, two different words with two different origins to mean very related things. But as a result of that, these two words have kind of uh, been used and reused to describe a whole bunch of related but not quite the same concepts. And I just want to be able to run through that with you. So we have play, we have game, we have sport. So let's let's start with all the like the noun definitions. Like what is what are all the things that play can mean, game can mean, or sport can mean when it, when you are using it as a noun? Yeah. Game as in I don't know, I think it's spider maybe? Like to spit game? Uh huh. Let's spit that game. Yeah, okay, sorry, all right. So, so that is. Uh, okay, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm going to use the word swagger because I think it gets across the the concept across well. Yeah. Like gaming the system somehow. You're like. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's kind of verby, but yeah. yeah uh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That is to to game to to yeah, sure. which 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 means to. Sorry. Uh, which how would you describe that 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 concept to game the system? Um. Game and gaming the system. I don't know, like it's playing to cheat or look for loopholes, exploits, you know, uh, you know, exploit maybe. Okay. Uh, play. It, it can be like a move or like a, an action you take. Like a baseball play. Like yeah. you know, that was a great play. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, okay. So so like a like a tactic almost. Yeah. Right? yeah. A one that you actually have to execute, not the yeah. same concept. It's something that actually had to happen. Yeah. Like the theater performance. The theater performance, so so stage uh, or you know, opera or something like that. Okay. Stage play. What else here? You can play as in this is not that serious. Okay. So just like playing around or something. So Charles play. 
you know, you know, this is this, 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 this idea of the thing that kids are doing most of the time is play in some sort of like general noun sense. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the child. Yeah. And pressing play. Okay, so 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 play as in to initiate a, 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 a sequence sometimes overlaps a little bit with this, but yeah, you know, is is it, it, to you can you can use play to describe something that happened in the past or to make play or uh, with with, with uh, and, and and to start a play. All right, press pre or oh, press play to you know actually that's that's a. Uh, Instead of saying initiate, maybe it's like this icon, right? Yeah. This icon on the VCR, or uh, no one uses VCRs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on a quick time screen window. All right, so, all right, what else? No one's touching sport yet. Right? Sport can be like to show off, like if you're sporting like, a looker or a thing. Okay, I, I, oh, so, so like sporting your colors. Yeah. Okay, so so uh, like a display of some sort. I'm gonna put that more in the verb side yeah, of things. Okay. Could be like a nickname yeah. for a young. <coughs> <laughs> hey, sport. Yeah. Old <laughs> sport. Yeah. It can also be like a good sport. Some like mm -hmm. a nice game. Some sort of virtue, virtuous kind of thing. Yeah. And the, I'm not sure if I got that right, but. It can mean like fun or hobby, like you do something for sport. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's uh, fishing for sport. Fishing for sport? Or yeah, and I hunt for sport. fishing for sport as opposed to sport fishing. Right, you know, that, that those are, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's another pun, but never mind. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so, um, so for fun. Um, so I mean, I mean it, it's funny because often it's it's used to make something sound like it's for low stakes when it actually is very high stakes. Like you know, oh, we're going to hunt people for sport. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> 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 I, I, I just I just think of like old like like 18th century literature when it comes to you know he 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 he, he plays at you know yeah, it's, it's often like he plays at. Relationships for sport or something like that, right? You know, it's like something that's supposed to be high stakes, but it's not. Okay, so for I think I, maybe instead of for fun, I'll say for those stakes or, or, or no stakes. Okay, which is bizarre because sport is usually a very high stakes thing. What else? Yeah. People think sport they tend to think athletics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so. There's, there's a whole section in Partlet where he talks about the possibility that the word game might have come from bending of the bending of knees because gam is uh, some sort of Welsh Welsh root for a leg, gam can. Um, but uh, but that's now nowadays more associated with some sort of physical uh, physical activities to, uh, and sport tend to go together. What else? Sort of like something that you punch like. Like poultry, yeah. Uh, like 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 um, yeah. So so uh, yeah. Game as in um, animal <coughs> that you hunt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Ru Ru Roosevelt first. I didn't know that. So I guess it's more of an idiomatic expression, but people tend to use game. <coughs> Something is also low stakes. Like mm -hmm. you've heard the, the phrase, you think this is a game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So 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 again, something that is low stakes. So so or, or, or it's inconsequential almost like you know like like um, like there there's no penalty for having done this thing. Uh, Like, you know, mm. he's made in a game to do this. Mm. Right. 
Um, hmm. I guess it's sort of like an intention of like mocking or rebuff. Oh, hmm. I, I feel that's related to this one yeah. because you're kind of when you make a game of something, what you're really doing, you're kind of belittling it, right? Yeah. So I think that's just a different application of the same concept. But it, when you're making a game of something, aren't you also making a structure of it? That's uh, what I or is that a different? Is that different than what you were saying? For me? Yeah. Well, I was saying from like the uh, sort of the mockery sense of it, uh -huh. like oh, you know, he's made a game of our process or something like that. Okay. But but I think making a structure of it is a different uh, application, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you you are applying rules to something that might have not needed it necessarily, but you know now not, now you're coming up with rules. Uh, I'm going to make a game out of tipping, right? You know, uh, because well, we have five people, I mean, split the tips up. All right. Um, um, it can also refer to athletics. Like, before the Super Bowl, everyone talked about the big game. Big game, right, OK. I, I'm just going, going to say the big game, or the game, the you know. And I'm also thinking of the phrase, like, it's all part of the game, where someone might do something. By the EA Sports logo? Um, okay. No, isn't that given the game? <laughs> Right? No, I thought it was EA Sports. It's all in the game, right? That, that, that's how it works. Is it? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I, sports is in the game. But, yeah. in the but game. get in the game is almost certainly a motto of or some sports. sporting goods yeah. manufacturer. It's all part yeah. of the game. It's all part of the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like when someone does something unexpected, or maybe like you might think it's unethical or slightly immoral or uh, uh, going yeah. out of the boundaries of. Are what? you thinking of Game of Thrones? Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. That's all it that is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking like a lawyer doing something backhanded and you know, like the prosecutor is surprised, but the defense attorney is like, it's all part of the game. Right, right, <laughs> so right, right. That, yeah, so 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 that's this sort of like this bounded space where things are permitted, like specific kinds of things that <coughs> might uh, th this th this <laughs> this introduces a concept that uh like so am I saying that? Yeah. That introduces the magic circle. Uh, this is this is a uh, I'm not sure if we have any reading that's touched on this, but this idea that a game is this bounded space where you can do things in it that you wouldn't necessarily be allowed to do in real life. Right. Um, and similarly, consequences that happen inside don't necessarily apply to outside, but can be incredibly important while you're inside. Like the ball, where the position of a ball is generally meaningless outside of the game, but inside the game is everything, right? Um, <coughs> But you know you can, you know, uh, body check somebody in a hockey rink, you know. Uh, uh, but you're not really allowed to do that on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, that that I think that gets close to what you know, sort of lawyer application of like you know you're allowed to do this within these parameters because this is how the game is played. All right. Whereas yeah, this I, I'm wondering about the game, the, the, this concept of the game as in the big game, like a Super Bowl, and I'm wondering if that's only, is that only used in broadcast? Or is that... So there's certain rights that you can't say, like Super Bowl? Right. Without NBC's permission or whoever has the rights that year. Mm -hmm. But, but so even something like, are you going to come over to watch the game, which doesn't necessarily mean it's the Super Bowl. <coughs> right, right. It's like, like, here's this weekly thing, but it seems to be very TV related, this, this the game as this thing that you see on TV. And this event is happening at a specific time rather than than, um, than football in general. So there's some crossover then because like the stage aspect because you're watching it, but also mm -hmm. the athletics aspect. Yeah, it goes back to this. The sport yeah. The game. So, so I'm just going to put, put TV next to that. Okay, um, you had your hand up for a while. Yeah, I was going to say game as like skill was in like he's got game. Mm -hmm. Sort of like uh, skill or ability. I, that, I think that goes back to the swagger yeah. a little bit. Kind so, of. The swagger is like attitude, whereas this might be skill. It, I guess it could go either it, 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 The assumption, I think, is that you that those two are related, I yeah. think. Well, yeah. one's the appearance of skill, and the other is having yes. skill. Oh, spit mad game versus god. <laughs> okay, all right, okay, okay. So actual skill versus the versus portrayal skill. of that, all right. The game, like the pickup artist thing. Oh, that's 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 a a, a, a sort of um, that's the dating game base, basically. It's, it's it's kind of what what that's described as. I, I know there's a book that's very specifically called the game, but it's I think I think that the use of the word the game to describe dating in general predates that book by far. Um, 
Um, play could also be referred to sports, like mm -hmm. like um, like in football. There's a certain like book that you like a collection of plays, a playbook. Yeah, that's kind of, but that, that's like oh, a yeah, collection of these right. things, right? Yeah. yeah, but but you're right. You 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 can write these things down. You can talk about them as as, as, a, as a library of things that you can do. There's the the great game. The great game. The was it the <coughs> was it the Afghan war or the Crimean war? Oh, so now we're in the great game part two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so like the England versus Russia or Napoleon versus Russia. I forget exactly. Years and dates, but it was a yeah the social political conflict going on mm -hmm. at that time. So so that there are there are specific wars that are referred to as the Great Games uh, as as Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones probably is related to that too, although that's that includes political. Um, I mean, this even just on a noun side, we've gone through a lot. Uh, Somebody didn't. Uh, I mean, I, I, if you include adjectives, and we've brought up a couple of adjectives so far. Um, part of it also talks about how some people can say that you have a game leg, uh, which means you actually have, have a busted leg, which is kind of weird. But uh, it, but but it, it, it's it's his extrapolation of where the word game might actually have come from, from 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 Celtic origins rather than from Latin origins. Um, how about verbs? Sporting. To sport. Well, I guess we already did to sport. Although, you know, to game, to play. To manipulate. To play someone. To manipulate, right? Like playing with somebody's emotions. Yep, exactly. Uh, it's like to execute. Like if you play a, make a play mm -hmm. that's like you're executing it. Building, right. building on that, it could be like a performance. Like to play an instrument. Okay. But it's like also kind of like executing. You're, you know, yeah, executing a series of things. You execute a stage play, like you're like trying to But to yeah. play something in a game seems like a much more time limited thing than to play a musical instrument. It seems kind of like a lifetime thing almost. Like I play something. Uh, I play the clarinet. It's a very has a very different connotation from I play this queen. You know, I, I play this card. So, so I, I, those are two possibly on the same spectrum, but they are like almost al al opposite ends, closely related, but on opposite ends. Sporting, sporting. I I generally associate again, sort of like to be a good sport, but you know, to, this is this is more like fairness. Sporting gives someone a sporting chance, kind of thing. Is it is this just too British? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> it might be. <clears throat> it's funny how that this seems to be like the only connotation of game as a verb, right? But gaming is also kind of associated with the gambling industry. Right? The, 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 if you if you talk if you go to a gaming conference, what they actually mean? Is that you know they're talking about stakes, stakes, stake, stake games, uh, roulette. What about like, like uh, two games? Like I play games. Yeah. Games. yeah. So so that's that's actually even thing a fairly recent connotation. It's just just to you know usually in association with digital games, but not always. <coughs> right. So so to to um, play games. Right. Like when you say someone like I am a gamer, right? It's not implying that I I, I don't for loopholes and everything that I can do. Good things. <laughs> so I I'm pretty sure we could keep on going for a while. Um, I just think it's kind of neat that that that, that we have all of these different terminologies to the, um, that all use the same words. Um, it can. It often um, can get confusing in sort of casual speech. It typically doesn't happen. It doesn't get too confusing when you're talking to fellow designers or, fe or other people in the game industry because the context of which 
they're using any one of these words typically mm -hmm. is pretty clear. Uh, and you're always thinking about the context when you say, you know, they're gaming the system or, you know, they're, 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 they've got game, you know, in, uh, uh, in the system. It makes, it makes very different, uh, it, it makes it very clear. Um, but, I, but I do think that part that kind of slightly opens the, pen, uh, the, the box in, in, into this and he tries to touch <laughs> into, a, 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 into a sort of cross-section -se of all these things that these words can possibly mean. Yet, um, yet it's, it's even richer than that. And that the reason why he does that is so that he can actually get into the topic of his book, which is board games, specifically. And he starts breaking down, it's like, all right, now that we know that games and play and sports and everything all kind of fuzzy and muddled and not really very, very clear, how do we sort of at least clarify what we're talking about when it comes to board games? Anyone remember the five things that he ended up with? The five board, the five categories of board games that he kind of ended up ends up with. Four of them rhyme. One biggest. Race games. Race games. Space games. Chase games. And this place, which 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 he admits he only came up, he, he he only gave that name because it rhymes. <laughs> yeah. And then number five. Was like, I think he just gave up at this point. <laughs> it was interesting because he was kind of saying like, here are these four that traditionally other scholars tend to ignore. Uh, that, that, uh, the, here, here are these four, which traditionally other s scholars like to study because they are bereft of theme. And, but then, yeah, and they take and, and they look at theme games and they say like that's not worthy of study. <coughs> There's this whole chunk, and and Partlet says, wait a minute, how you know? First of all, most of the games that you'll buy off the shelf right now are probably theme games, and the only reason why there is this uh, interest in race games, chase games, displace games, space games, I I I I I I'm getting confused. Um, it's because a lot of those are. Oh, he he also describes those four as positional games. <coughs> Um, and positional games uh, of the sort that scholars like to study tend to be folk games that have been handed down from generations. Uh, of course, he's narrowing it down to board games. He's not including things like card games, which are also, you know, uh, of which there's also a very rich uh, folk game tradition. He has a whole separate book that I think we also get to in this class uh, that on, on card games. But this is just specifically his, his, his board game work. Um, but he wants to start looking at theme games, and this was this was him introducing scholarship on theme games uh, later on on his book. Um, I just want to make you realize that you know the whole idea of studying games as a product. We already talked a little bit about how that how the idea of a game as a product to begin with was fairly new. Uh, we're talking about 1900s when that starts to become a thing. Uh, but then uh, the idea of studying something <coughs> like that. Oh no! It's, I think we're talking about like 50s and 60s. Uh, you know, very very recent. The idea that games as a product is something that we can study, whereas things like games as a sport can probably go back a little bit further than that. Um, I mean, stat statistics, for instance, has been has been obsessed with baseball for like the longest time um, because it's very rich and we have good records. So um, I don't want to go too much into how he arrives at those definitions. You know, he takes a couple of definitions that other people have come up with and tries to build on them. Like you know, all scholars, he's citing previous work. Um, but what I'd like to to have us play today are what I feel are kind of some a couple of modern takes on those categories that he came up with. So um, you know, the race game. What's a race game? Uh, if you want to describe it in one sentence. Hmm? Get to the end point first. Get to the end point first, right. So this Cartagena uh, um, has anyone played this? Okay, so um, this is a, if you, if you look at the game, it feels a little bit like a, t like a, a tile laying game because what you're really doing is you are trying to create this path uh, from the jail that you're escaping. You have a bunch of pirates. Uh, from the jail that you're escaping all the way to the boat, and then you know you can run off uh, scot scot free. But one of the core mechanics is that every player controls a different set of pirates. You have a bunch of different colors, and you're all trying to get to the 
to the boat first. So the first person to get your entire gang of pirates to the boat wins. So it's a race game, they're racing against other people. It just happens to be the track that you're racing on happens to be something that you build over time rather than something that, that's predetermined. So it's an interesting build taper thing. Um, let me skip power grid to the other things. Um, for displace games, has anyone played Twilight Struggle in this room? Okay, I may need you to help explain this game to other people. Um, um, okay. Sure. I played it once, like at the end of my first semester. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> Why don't just take a look at the rules again? Yeah, this is it's it's it, it's unfortunately a little bit of a tall order to ask someone to pick up Twilight Struggle um, uh, in class. But it's worth looking at at least as a design system. You know, th this is a war game. You are given a map of the world. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, you are. It is. It is the Cold War, 1945 to 1989, and there's a whole bunch of things that come from modern game design. Like you have event cards that recall important things that happened: Cuban Missile Crisis, Korean War, pushing two rocket deployed, things like that. Um, but in the end, it's about influence across a space which just happens to be laid out along uh, on top of the map of the world to regions like the uh, United States of America, to South, to South and Central America, uh, to Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and so on and so forth. So, um, so you are deploying influence points, which is not all that different from um, the, the, the point what he calls man, uh, men's, <laughs> man's uh, <laughs> um, across the space. Uh, and uh, trying to be able to seize the, uh, to to push influence towards your faction rather than to the opposite, depending on whether they play in the US or or the Soviet. So, display games. Um, just uh, wait, hold on. Are, are those display games? Those are. Well, let me just set to this one. Scotland Yard. Yeah, I, I think this this might have been. Now this is this is this was what I intended to 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 bring out as this place, but I'm not so sure whether you capture any pieces in this game. Do you recall? You capture things. You capture it once. Like you, you, you trade you it once back and forth over right pieces. You'll yeah. capture it, but then you can reintroduce it later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this does fit into this place then. Let's, um, Scotland Yard, which I believe we have mentioned in class before, is kind of like a evolution of the chase game. Uh, chase, ch ch chase games are like, super old. They, uh, the, um, some of the more famous uh, ancient ones are Scandinavian in origin, a lot of Norse, a lot of Viking games, uh, where you have a king, you have a couple of guards for, or bodyguards for the king, and you get a whole bunch of like, low-level pawns all trying to flank the king. That's, that's, the, that's the theme of a, a whole genre of games called Tafel, of which chase games will form a big part of. Uh, in this game, you are a Mr. X on the run from a bunch of Scotland Yard detectives. And the map is London. Uh, more importantly, it's the London public transport system. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to go underground, you're trying to, to grab cabs, take buses, um, and uh, conceal where you are while the rest of the players who are all controlling uh, the detectives, actually. Yeah, three to six players. Um, the people who are contrary detectives are basically just trying to flank you. And so, you know, a nice little modern evolution. Uh, they, they have a neat little doodad, which is a way to be able to track the moves that you made without revealing it to your opponents. Um, is the, the bad guy's um, position private or public? It is private. Uh, it, it, but um, little bits of information pop up. Okay. Um, so you reveal that when you're public. Empire Builder is a train game, which uh, one of our grad student alums now almost exclusively studies. Um, but a very interesting kind of genre of train game that you, um, you may not have heard of called Crayon Rails, where you are given a big sheet of plastic, uh, a plastic laminated board, I guess it's kind of like a jigsaw, and, uh, and, a, grease pr and a grease crayon, a bunch of grease crayons actually. Crayola washable crayons, here we go. And you're just drawing your rails across the map, trying to establish your railroad empire. So, um, this, this, this was the one that I was picking up as space because it's all about occupying space, but you're occupying space with a network rather than occupying space with just pieces that you're placing down. 
uh, you're, mm -hmm. you're creating lines across the United States while you're doing that. So, uh, so I think train games are, this particular genre of train games are an interesting take on the space game. Um, there's a whole other genre of, uh, of, of train games that's really more about the economics of what it's like to be a robber baron, train, tra uh, train lord. Those are really fascinating as well, and those go kind of in more in the economic sense, which part of it doesn't really address. Or maybe they, or maybe those fall under his, his, his definition of theme games. Yeah. yeah. And Power Grid is just this like huge mishmash of everything. Um, but I'm using it as an example of a theme game that kind of where if you play any of these games and you play Power Grid, you will see the you will see the connections. Um, it's a game where you play on a network of Germany, and you're basically oops, I'm holding this up right now, sorry. Uh, and you're basically trying to create efficient links between different power stations that you're building, and it's not all that different from creating a railroad empire. You know, you just happen to be trying to create a ge energy ge generating empire that's going to use different commodities like, um, you know, oil and I think you can burn refuse. Yeah, you can burn refuse, you can burn, you can burn coal, um, and you're all playing on the same space. You can occupy space, so in the way it's, it's kind of like a space game because once you've taken space, no one else can take it away from you. But most of this game is about the economy rather than um, about the specific positions where you place things, although that's going to influence your economy. Um, so uh, it's a complicated game. Uh, it's very well designed if you have the right set of rules. Uh, the rules that come in the box have misprints in them. Um, Specifically, they build, they break things into turns, phases, and turns, phases, and steps, and then they they kind of don't use those words consistently. Um, if you are interested in seeing how fairly straightforward rules can be really really confusing, uh, take a look at the rules of Power Grid. Then take a look at the printed rules that I printed out from the user printer, uh, because these are the revised rules. These are the revised rules from Morgan Geek that, um, that have some, uh, that are basically translations of the German rules. And, um, and they're a little bit more consistent. It is a complicated game. Um, you might not be able to get through a full game and learn the game at the same time. If anyone, uh, anyone here play Power Grid? Okay. I would I encourage you to set up the game to help more people through. <coughs> All right, so what we're going to do, um, actually, any questions before we break out into game game groups? No. Okay, so we'll play this until about um, actually I think all the way until three probably, uh, yeah, or at least uh, two forty-five or so. Yeah, we'll, we'll call five. Then start later. Yeah, we'll have about fifteen minutes for you to get all of your playtests ready, and in the last hours we'll be playtesting. Cool.